and welcome to episode 6 of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah and I am coming to you as always from sunny St. Petersburg, Florida in the United States where I live. You can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube as the Cozy Cottage Crochet and on Ravelry it's just the Cozy Cottage. Hello, how are you? I can't believe it's episode 6 already. It has been a crazy two weeks. I do have some things to show you. Um, a finished object, some works in progress. Uh, I did want to say that the giveaway winners that I announced last time for the stitch markers that I made, all of those have gone out in the mail. The last one went out on the mail on Monday night, which was just a few days ago. So they should be on their way to you. Let me know if you get them. Um, hopefully you like them. <laughs> I, I think they're super cute. I was able to get two stitch markers in an envelope, in each envelope for each of the three winners. That's what I could get in the mail in just a card envelope without the postal service pitching a fit. <laughs> so each of you had two stitch markers on the way to you and I hope you get them, I hope you like them. Let me know if there's any issues. First segment is, as usual, what am I wearing? Um, it is like 95 degrees outside because it's Florida. It's very hot and steamy today. It's been raining all week. So in addition to the water in the air, you've, there's like steam coming up from the ground pretty much. But it's freezing inside because we have the air conditioner on. So I feel horrible for people that live in parts of the world that don't have air conditioners which is just completely foreign to me because we run the air conditioner all year round. I think in, my husband and I have been married almost six years, we have turned the heat on one time. One time <laughs> in their entire marriage. So we have heating and cooling, but I know a lot of places up north in the United States, places in the UK, they just have heating. They don't have a central air conditioner. They have like fans or they might have like a little window unit or something like that. But we have central heating and cooling because it's just too hot. So I can, I'm perfectly comfortable wearing this right now because I'm inside. But if I were to walk outside, it would come off in a second. This is just my granny triangle scarf. It is, I made it using one ball of the Lion Brand Mandala yarn, which is that yarn that has very long color changing stripes. I call it my sunset, sunset shawl because to me it looks like a sunset and it's super soft. I love wearing this. I haven't worn it too much recently because it's been so warm but it matches what I'm wearing. <laughs> so I just love it. It's super easy to make. I just picked up a granny triangle and kept going until I ran out of yarn which turned out to be one entire ball made the perfect size scarf after it was blocked and washed. And this yarn is really, really soft and drapey. Like for an acrylic, I'm impressed with this yarn. If I could get a hold of some more, I would, but it's sold out everywhere. People, basically people have lost their minds over the Lion Brand Mandala yarn, just like they did over the Karen Cakes. And the Mandala yarn is impossible to find anywhere near me. I can only, it, Walmart has it, but they've been sold out for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I'm assuming it's going to be that way for a little while longer until they restock. Just like when everyone had the run on Karen Cakes, they were completely sold out everywhere for quite a while until they could get another batch of them prepared and shipped out. So that's what I'm wearing. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to jump right in to finished objects. I have one finished object is something that I showed on the podcast last week and if you follow me on Instagram then you will know what this is and it's also the title of this episode. <laughs> it is the way too big top. So I finished it and it is huge. It does not fit me at all so I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'll show you the pattern. It is the creme de la creme top. which the pattern itself is beautiful. It's in issue 47 of the Simply Crochet magazine. I have wanted to make it for a while and I finally just made it. 
with some yarn that I had had in stash for quite a while. It's the Patton's Canadiana yarn. It's 100% acrylic, which honestly isn't ideal for garments. 192 yards per ball, and I had about five and a half of these balls. I have used five, so I have a little bit left. I don't know what to do with this. It's, this is the back. Can you guys see how big this is? <laughs> this is the front. It's huge. It's huge. And I like a little bit of positive ease. I like things to be baggy and loose on me. This is literally falling off. So it's done, but I can't wear it, and I don't really know what to do about that because all the ends are weaved in and it's completely blocked and everything. So I don't know, like there's no way I can, I'm, first of all, I'm not ripping it out and redoing it because I don't like the yarn enough to do that. And also there were a lot of ends that got weaved in. It just grew, like it grew so much when it got blocked. I do, I am a little bit more of a fan of the pattern than I was last week. I'll give you guys a close up. So it was very, very scrunched up last time. I'm not sure if you could see it very well, but it's, the blocking really helped it spread out a lot. I especially like this part down here, that detailing. It's not really my color palette, I'll, although I do like it more than I did at the last episode when it was only halfway done. It, I just don't really think it's something that I would wear. The brown, I don't wear brown really, and the cream, and I don't know. I'm not sure a variegated yarn is good for this pattern, or at least maybe not this variegated yarn. So I don't know, I don't know what to do with it. I did enter it because it's 960 yards of yarn in this thing. I did enter it in the KCACY, Keep Calm and Pick Carry Yarn, Crocheters versus Knitters, Cal Cal, because 960 yards, y'all, that's a lot. But I, I, I don't know what to do with this now. I don't want to throw it out because it took a lot of work. I don't want to just donate it through a thrift shop, but I honestly don't know of anyone that would wear this. I mean, it's it's very wide. I don't know. What should I do? <laughs> Help! Have you guys ever made something that turned out way, way, way too big? And that you didn't want to wear because you didn't like the color? The only good thing about this is now all of this yarn that has been haunting me in my stash for a year maybe longer, is gone. It's gone. It's now all in here. I have one tiny little ball left. So that's my finished object. If you have any ideas of what I should do with it, let me know. I, I could gift it to someone, but I'm kind of afraid they wouldn't like it either because of the way it looks in the variegated yarn. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe someone would love it. <laughs> I don't know dilemma. I, I really want to make the pattern again. I just need to get some different yarn. First of all, I want to make it in a sport weight yarn, which is what the pattern called for. This is a worsted weight yarn. So I made a small in the pattern, but it turned out to be when I was crocheting it, it was, I got gauge for the large size, which is what I wanted. But once it was blocked, it's like an extra large now. So I need to get the size of yarn that the pattern calls for because it's so pretty. I think it's beautiful in the cream color. I don't really wear a lot of cream either. I tend to be, okay, this is why I don't wear a lot of cream or white because it'll just spill something on it. And if I spilled something on a garment that I had made myself, I think I would have a meltdown. So maybe I could get gray <laughs> or blue or pink or something that would be a little more forgiving. So I do want to make it again, not anytime soon because I don't have any yarn for it, but that's a finished object. <laughs> I'm glad it's finished. 
and it's an object, but that's really all I can say about it. <laughs> Melody, I was talking to Melody from the Melody Crochet Podcast, and she was like, well, sometimes we just make things just to make them, and that is so true, because I have no purpose for this. The other, I did actually finish two hats, which had previously been finished. I showed these two podcasts ago, I think. This little hat and this little hat. They still have a t they still have tails hanging out. I didn't want to weave in the last ends because I'm afraid they're going to be too small still. So I had finished them before, but they turned out to be too small. So I ripped it all back to here and did an extra increase row, and then I made them a little bit longer. So really, I I have two finished hats that count as finished objects, but I had previously finished them, so I refinished the same objects. And I really hope they fit this time. I think they will. I had a, a guy try them on instead of just trying them on my head and seeing if they were loose enough. So I think they will fit this time. And then if then I'll weave in these, these last two little tails. If not, if you want them to be longer, then I'll just keep going. So... <laughs> Oh, I do have one other little thing to show you. It's it's technically a finished object. It's these little these little cotton circles. Maybe I'll show them to you like this. So I've got an orange one, orange and purple one. These three are my favorite. I love those colors. And then two white ones. These are for a gift for someone, but they're little makeup remover face scrubby pads, which just, um, I used some leftover Lily sugar and cream cotton yarn, 100% cotton that I had left over from making some dishcloths for people for Christmas last year. I just had little amounts and it was exactly enough to make a circle like this with about maybe a foot left. So it was perfect for using up these little scraps of cotton yarn. And what you do, they can be completely washed and dried, is you just, you can wash your face with them, put the face wash right on them, or you can use makeup remover and use them as reusable makeup remover pads. So I just love them. I have a few myself that I have made, and I think they're a great little gift. So I made those this week, and they're going to go to their home shortly, as soon as I see the person that they belong to. And I hope that you will like them. Um, yeah, so if you're ever looking for a really easy gift, um, if you, as long as you have some cotton yarn, just make some of these. You can make them in any shape. I chose to make circles, but you could make squares, you could make hexes, as long as it's fairly dense. That's a bad example. The white is blowing out. See, that? that that's a lot better. As long as it's fairly a dense stitch, it'll work better for scrubbing your face. You don't want a lot of holes because that's not gonna work very well. Those are my three little things. I've got a top that I can't wear, two hats that I redid, and a little stack of circles. You win some, you lose some, right? Okay, so let's move on to works in progress. I do have some stuff to show you which I feel like I don't have that much to show you, but now that it's all spread out, I, it is, I have made some progress on some things. There's one project that I will talk about <laughs> in just a little bit that has been eating up all of my time, and you can't really tell. <laughs> you ever have those projects? So I do have some project, some progress on some other projects though. And the first is my Venice lace top that I showed you guys last time. This is in the Easy Breezy Crochet Lace magazine that I picked up at my local grocery store a few months ago. It's April 2017. This is the pattern. The Venice Lace Top. It's, oh, I love it. It's so, so cute. It is a crop top, and I am I am not a crop top person. It's not okay, especially because I have a, long, a rather long torso, so if I have, were wearing a crop top, like a regular one, it would be really cropped, which would make me very uncomfortable. So last time I had had part of the front and the back panels finished. I am, what I had done was I, I only have a certain amount of yarn, and the yarn that I'm using is the 
Lion Brand. Is that upside down? The Lion Brand 24-7 cotton, which is a mercerized cotton. You get 186 yards per 100 grams. It, it says that this is a worsted, a medium weight yarn, but I personally think it's a little thin for that. I think it's like a thick sport weight yarn, more likely. So then I have one full ball of it left, and then I have about this much. So what I had done is I made the front and the back panels according to the pattern specifications, how many repeats the pattern called for. Then I wanted to make the little sleeves to make sure that I had enough yarn. Then I went back to the front and back panels and I'm going to lengthen them one pattern repeat at a time until either I get to the length I'm happy with or I run out of yarn. So these, I do have two little sleeves. <laughs> they don't really look like sleeves yet because they're not attached to anything, but they're kind of like little, little mesh cap sleeves. If you can see the pattern. And I really, really like, I'll zoom in on this again, the stitch definition that this yarn gives. And it's pretty soft. I think it'll be even softer once it's washed. So I made the two sleeves, then I went back. The pattern calls for eight pattern repeats, and I am at, let's see. On this piece, I have 10 now. So that could be the front or the back. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> and on this one, I think I have nine, and I just started the 10th pattern repeat a little stitch marker to hold it in place and I'm about to run out of yarn <laughs> on those this ball I can get through four pattern repeats approximately with one ball of yarn this works up pretty quickly because I'm using a size six millimeter crochet hook which it's it's nice to work on something that works up that quickly because I've been doing some sport weight stuff recently with that seashore bliss cardigan which I'll talk about in a minute and it seems like that just takes forever. And this goes very quickly. So I still need to get, I'm thinking I want at least one more pattern repeat. And I don't know, I'll show you guys. So if this is gonna be on my shoulders like this, it's still, like my belly button is right here. And it's still not long enough for me. <laughs> I need it to be probably another four, four, five inches longer, and this isn't really gonna grow. It's not like, it's an acrylic cotton blend. It's 100% cotton, so it's not gonna grow when I block it, unless I hang it wet, and I don't wanna stretch it out, because then it'll block really unevenly. So I need it to be as long as I need it to wear before I stop. <laughs> so I have one ball of yarn, which should be more, it should be plenty, because I already have 10 on this one, and this I know will get me four pattern repeats. So I'm thinking maybe two more on each panel and then I'll sew everything together. I really can't wait to wear this. This is gonna be a perfect summer top and I love red. I don't own a lot of red things. I don't know why. I don't, I don't have a clue why, but when I saw this yarn, I immediately thought of the Venice lace top and I was like, I have to make this. It's gonna be perfect. And I feel like red, I feel like red's a good color, even though I'm really like, really pale to the point where I have to put sunscreen on like every time I go outside. Um, I think red works for me way better than brown and cream like that ridiculous lace top I showed you before. So that's work in progress number one. Sorry, I think there's something in my eye. I'm not sure. I don't want to touch it though because I'm wearing eye makeup. <laughs> so that I don't look like a ghost in the podcast light. Um, work in progress number two. I had hoped to have a little more to show you. I do have some to show you. It is the Seashore Bliss cardigan. It's the pattern by Drops Design that has given me crochet anxiety. I am at the point of doing the sleeves. The whole body is finished, which I showed you guys last time. I'm doing the sleeves at the same time so that I don't have to re-figure out how to do them <laughs> because it did take me a while to figure out how to start the first sleeve 
because I had had to add a couple of stitches underneath the arm as it was too small originally so I added a few stitches then I had to figure out how to decrease them in the pattern and then I just I got to the right number of stitches and then I started the pattern I did have let me show it to you so you can see it's not very well this right here is the start of both sleeves so it's a couple of rows I have both of them are exactly the same you guys see my little mushroom stitch marker? So cute. Um, I actually had one whole sleeve almost finished. <laughs> this is a three-quarter, a three-quarter sleeve, so it's it's about one pattern repeat. One, yeah, it's one pattern repeat, but in the diagram it's like maybe 10 to 12 rows, something like that, and I had done the whole thing. But it was a little too big like the sleeve itself was like this is kind of a fitted sleeve and I'm okay with that but it was kind of like down here just like hanging and if it's gonna be a three-quarter length sleeve I need it to be more fitted than that so that it'll look normal so I, I ripped it all out <laughs> I did have one whole one almost finished all of this yarn right here the wound back on the ball is the sleeve that I ripped out so I kind of understand what I'm doing now though, at least for the sleeve. So I'm going to decrease, they want you to decrease two when you start the first round. I'm going to decrease six, that'll get rid of a whole two pattern repeats in each row. So I'll decrease by, by two pattern repeats and then when you're about four rows in it wants you to decrease again and I think I'm going to decrease again. But I'm going to keep trying it on to make sure that I like it. So I'm, I really can't wait for this to be done because it's a perfect summer cardigan. I think I've decided, I don't have buttons for it yet, but I'm going to need to sew a ribbon on the back of this band if I want to add buttons. And I really think it needs buttons because of the scoop neck, otherwise it's going to be like weirdly flopping open. So it needs buttons, but the buttons aren't going to work if there's if this band doesn't have more structure so I think I need to sew a ribbon on the back of it so I guess that means I'll have to go to Joann's and buy a ribbon oh darn I did borrow my mom's old sewing machine again not that I know how to use it but because I don't want to hand sew a ribbon on this so if I can figure out via YouTube tutorials how to thread the machine and get it working um, I'm fairly confident that I can sew in a straight line I've done that before so I'm gonna maybe I, I'm I'm gonna have to take this with me and see if I can find a ribbon that matches because that's a pretty unique peachy pink color. Well, that's my cardigan. Got my two little stitch markers holding my places. Hopefully, next time I'll have more. <laughs> I'll have an actual finished sleeve um, that fits, so I won't have to rip it out again. I am. I'm glad I am. I'm glad I'm sticking with this because really it's just so pretty that it's definitely worth it. I had my doubts when I spent nine hours and got through like nine rows at the very beginning, but I, I have decided it is going to be worth it definitely. The next work in progress I want to show you is something that hasn't made an appearance in the last couple of episodes. It is my beach cover up that I'm working on very slowly very slowly. <laughs> it is also out of a Simply Crochet Magazine issue 45 and this is the pattern. I think it's beautiful. Um, theirs is made out of 100% cotton yarn I believe. Mine I have some cotton linen blend that I got it Tuesday morning by Fibra Natura. It's called the Naturaline yarn. Got it in white and blue. This is a discontinued yarn, so I had got a hold of about eight, eight or ten balls of this. I just bought everything that they had because I wanted to make that tunic and I wasn't sure how much I needed. <laughs> but I knew that I was probably going to need it to be, need more yarn than the pattern called for because I wanted to make it a little bit longer. This yarn is very, very stiff though, and it hurts my arm. To work on it and maybe it's just my crochet gauge is way too tight or something 
but it really hurts my arm. So I've been doing very slowly working on it. It's living in my ice cream scoop bag that I got from Target. And this, this is how much is done so far. So pretty much, I think I've, here's my other stitch marker. I have a progress keeper on it from the last time that I showed it on the podcast right here. So I've done about six or seven rows since then. So considering how long each row takes me, because I have to go really slowly so I don't cause myself any pain, um, I'm okay with that. And also, somehow, if you can't tell anymore, because I fixed it, but like right around here on one of these rows, I had somehow crocheted two of the triangles together and then didn't even notice and kept going for like three rows. So not only I, my triangle count was off, you have to have 38 for each round, but it looked very strange. Like if you just saw it, you could immediately tell that two of the triangles were crocheted together. I don't know how I didn't notice that. So it, the thought of unraveling all of that work made me want to die a little bit. So I didn't. <laughs> Instead, I took scissors to my crochet project and I cut out the offending join and I inserted another triangle and then I did the same thing on the next three or four rows. I snipped the yarn and I added a triangle and then I tied everything together and weaved in the ends. So there's like 20 ends weaved in right here, which hopefully they won't come out <laughs> in the future. I think I weaved them in pretty well. You can kind of tell like right here, this triangle is a little funky. That's one of the ones that had a hard life. So, I mean, that was kind of a pain too. I don't know, I, was it really a good idea to take attack my project with scissors? Probably not, but I think it'll be fine. And I was really happy that I didn't unravel the whole thing. So that's how much I've got, I think. I'm about to where the pattern calls for to start splitting off for the neck, but it's not its not long enough for me. I need it to probably be another six inches longer, so I'm just gonna keep going in the round until I'm happy with the length, and then I will split off for the neck. Maybe I can get this finished this summer sometime so I can actually wear it to the beach. <laughs> Who knows? If not, it's okay because we can go to the beach in December in Florida. That's absolutely fine. That was work in progress number three. Work in progress number four is the project that has been taking up all of my time. And it's the project I am trying to finish for the Festival of Finishing hosted by Faye of the Crochet Circle podcast and the Finish Along hosted by Crafter Noon Treats. And it is my granny stripe blanket by, the pattern is by Pearl Soho. I'm using Vanish Choice Yarn. I'm sorry I'm going way off screen, but this thing is huge. So I showed it last time. There's, it's a king sized crochet blanket. I can't, I can't, it's too big. <laughs> I don't even know how to show this properly. So, I have done a lot of work on this. You just can't tell because it's a king size crochet blanket. I'm sure it looks exactly the same as it did last time. But last time I was actually right about here. So I have completed one, two, I, last time I had completed three and a half stripes. That's how much of the blanket had been finished. And I've done about this much, which does not look like a lot. However, each Row, one row of this blanket takes me a half an hour because it's 300 stitches. A half an hour. So I don't know how many rows this is, but maybe probably 15 rows that I've done total or 16. That's eight hours of crochet time, which is a lot of crochet time if you're, I mean, I work and I just wish it looked like I had done more, I guess. But I'm happy that there's actually been some progress made on this. This is actually the wrong side. Let me 
can see all of these stitches. The white stripe is supposed to look more like this. A little neater on the other side. So I've calculated it all. And to finish this, I will need to have two to finish this stripe and then to have a whole nother blue stripe with white on the end. So I need two more complete blue sections, which are 30 rows each, plus the white rows in between. I have 58 rows left to do on this blanket. I am trying to take Faye's advice and break it down into small goals, like I'll do one row, every 10 rows I'll like give myself a treat or something. So I really, really, really want this to be done. But 58 rows is going to take me about 30 hours. 30 more hours on this blanket. That's like a, that's almost a work week. So I'm trucking along. This is what I've been working on. This is why I don't have a ton of progress on other things. Because the, I, obviously I cannot take this anywhere with me because it's, if I were to wear this as a shawl right now, <laughs> no, this is folded like four times. Oh, too hot. I can't do that. It weighs a ton. It's so heavy. But it's going to look great when it's done. So this is what I've been working on when I've been at home. And then the red top, my sweater, and the beach cover-up, that's what I've been carrying around with me. If when I go to work and I have a break, I'll work on it for 10 or 15 minutes. So I've been at home. I've been pretty monogamous on this blanket. So I'm hoping to have some more progress on that on that next time in the next two weeks. Maybe, maybe a whole stripe done. That would be another, that would be another 24 rows. Will I have 12 hours to work on it in the next two weeks? I don't know. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I want to try because I really, really need to get this done. It's going to be done. This blanket, the bane of my existence for the last year and a half will be done by the end of this summer. Even if I don't crochet a single stitch on anything else, it's gonna be done. That's my granny stripe blanket. The last thing is my project for the summer romance crochet along, which is hosted by Claudia from Crochet Luna and Clarizabeth from Crochet Cakes. We have a summer romance cow where you pick either you pick a project and it has to relate somehow to a favorite couple. So I picked Wesley and Buttercup from The Princess Bride and I am making this sunshine lace top, which I'm making, my plan was to make this top part in yellow and then this bottom part and underneath the sleeves in gray. This is also out of the Crochet Lace magazine. There's so many patterns in there that I want to make. I haven't gotten very far. I'm using the I Love This Cotton Yarn in yellow and in pewter from Hobby Lobby. Now this is a worsted weight yarn and I don't know why I did this. Next time, somebody please tell me to stop. The pattern calls for a sport weight yarn and I was like, oh, but I really want to make it out of I love this cotton because I know I love this cotton is super soft and will be perfect to wear in Florida in the summertime. But it's not a sport weight yarn, it's a worsted weight yarn. So this is my little gauge swatch. Which I got gauge and I don't know. I I got I'm making this I'm trying to do the same thing that I did with the creme de la creme top, make the small size and have it turn out to be large measurements. This is what I've done so far. This is the top portion of one sleeve. I do think I'm going to need to rip back a little bit because I was doing the decreases. I realized in the last row or two that I'm doing these decreases incorrectly on this side. I was ignoring the instructions, I guess. So doing those decreases, I'm gonna have to rip it out. I'm okay with the fabric that it's making. I mean, it's 
it's kind of soft, it's drapey, it's not super stiff, even though I'm using a four millimeter hook, which is not ideal for worsted yarn. But I'm, I'm already afraid that it's gonna be too big. Now I know that it's supposed to have drapey sleeves, but this is already, look how drapey that is. And it's still gonna have a whole nother panel underneath of the gray. Now, admittedly, it'll be a smaller panel, but even if it's half of that size, it's that's a big sleeve, right? So I'm not sure what to do. I can't, I really feel like the yarn needs a bigger hook, even though it would be okay if I continued with a size four millimeter hook, but I can't go up a hook size without decreasing the pattern further. And I can't decrease the pattern without doing a lot of math sketchy math because it doesn't tell you in the pattern how many stitches it is for a repeat so I'd have to figure that out and then do measurements and it would just I'm not sure how to finagle it to get what I want I'm thinking maybe I will make one whole sleeve the pattern has you make the whole top part first so you make this sleeve you start this way and you split off in the middle you do the front and the back and then you continue down one side for the other sleeve. I may stop when I get to the shoulder and start the gray portion and see if it's just way, way, way too big. And if it is, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll have to pick another pattern or something. Well, although there is another pattern that came with the yarn on the ball band, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but look at that cute, little sweater. Isn't that cute? It's got like a shell shell pattern on it. Although I'm a little concerned I'm not gonna be able to read. <laughs> Look how tiny that print is. They fit the whole pattern on half a ball band. And it makes it makes a pretty cute little sweater. And I think I'm gonna put that on my list to make so it I think if the sleeve does not work out, I'm really dying to make that pattern. But if the sleeve is just way too big and the I'm not satisfied with the material that it's making because of the hook size, then I will rip it back and tr maybe try that sweater or a different one with this yarn and then get some sport weight yarn for that pattern. I, I don't know why I keep doing this. I need to stop trying to make garments out of worsted weight yarn. like. Unless it's an actual sweater, I don't, like it's silly of me. I know that it's going to require a lot of calculating. This is going to be, it would be so much drapier in a sport weight yarn. I don't know, maybe I should go ahead and frog it and just make that sweater instead of the sunshine lace top with this. Oh, but look at how pretty it is. It's such a beautiful pattern. I love it. I don't know, what do you think? You think I should keep going and make a sleeve? I have until August 5th. The summer romance cal goes until August 5th, so I think I have enough time to do it, but I'm a little nervous because of what happened with the creme de la creme top. <laughs> so if you have any advice for me, please comment below and, and give me some advice so that I don't make a whole garment that I can't wear. So that would be so sad. Um, I don't mind so much with that garment, because the creme de la creme top, because the yarn is, I wasn't a fan of the yarn to begin with, but this is right up my alley, and if I can't wear it at the end because it's not the right size, I'm going to have a meltdown. So, if you have any advice, please let me know, because I, I mean, you can even see from this picture how drapey that sport weight yarn is. And they use Patton's Grace, which is a, it's a light, lightweight yarn. None of the stores around here have it, I've, and I've never used that yarn before. I'd have to order it online. So maybe it would be worth it, but I already have all the, I love this cotton. So I don't know, tell me what you think. Help me. <laughs> That's all the, works in progress that I have to show you. 
that's all the crochet that I've been able to do. I've been really, really busy the last two weeks just with work. I have not been traveling. In fact, I won't be traveling for work again at least until the end of July, which is awesome. I'm so excited to get to be home for a little while. But somehow work, even though I haven't been traveling, work has just gotten really, really crazy. So I've been really focusing on that and a little bit stressed out. And then when I get home, I work on the granny stripe blanket and I haven't, I'm, I'm even behind on my podcast, like by like 10 episodes <laughs> of the podcast that I've subscribed to. There's 10 of them that I haven't watched yet. And normally I have a little bit of time, like when I'm cooking dinner or when I'm crocheting, I'll put one on and that's kind of my, that's what I watch instead of TV. So I, it's just been crazy. Hopefully next time I'll have a, a whole, this is my goal. We'll see. We'll see. I would like to have a whole stripe done on that blanket. So another 24 rows on the granny stripe blanket. I would like to have the red top finished, which I definitely think that's feasible. And I would like to have at least one of the sleeves finished on the Seashore Bliss cardigan. Those are my goals. Because if I can get some of these projects off of my hook, especially that blanket, then I can finally get to some upcoming pro projects, which one of them I showed in the last podcast episode. It's the Make It Mint tank top. Let's see if I can get you a better picture of it. Oh yeah, right here. I'm using the leftover yarn that I have from my Hotel of Bees cow. I have enough to make a tank top. And I had started it last time, and then it, my chain, my foundation chain was too tight, and it was crinkling, so I ripped it out. And I was like, oh, I'll just redo it. No, I haven't started it. I haven't restarted it. I've been too busy. <laughs> so that is still on the back burner. And then I really want to start the Coliseum Shawl, which is by Faye of... The Crochet Circle Podcast. Let me show you. Page 34. This one. Because I have this yarn that I purchased specifically to make that shawl. This pink and blue. Look. Oh. Ooh, I almost dropped it and threw it on the floor. You would have heard a big crash. Like, I, this is so beautiful. It's getting blown. It's a little, I'm sorry. It's getting blown out and it's a little fuzzy, but this yarn is Barocco Modern Cotton DK. I got it at Gage, which is a yarn store in Austin, Texas. It was only $8.50 a ball. And you get 335 yards for 100 grams. It's going to be perfect for that shawl. And I, I, I really want to start this, but I will not. I cannot start. I don't even have a bag to put it in. That's how many projects I have on the go right now. So I will not start it until at least one of these other projects is finished. And in fact, I'm going to say, I will not start this until that red top is finished and I have at least one more entire stripe done on my granny blanket because the minute I start this, I'm, that's the only thing I'm going to want to crochet on, <laughs> which is good because it'll get finished quickly, but it's bad because I have too many works in progress already and apparently not enough time to work on them all. So that's kind of it. Um, that's all the yarny bits that I have to share with you. This might be a little bit shorter of an episode. I feel, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I feel like a little flustered or something. I don't know. It's just been a, it's been a crazy couple of weeks is what it's been. So I hope that that didn't come through too much. <laughs> I'm really thrilled to be able to be here and share some yarny things with you and to communicate with you. You guys are just so wonderful. Every time you comment, I see it. If I'm at work, it pops up on my phone. If I'm at home and I'm on my computer, I can log right in and see your comments. And I can't believe that just a, just a few weeks ago, I was having a giveaway for 
getting 250 subscribers and now it's over 450. I don't, if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you're a returning viewer, you've been here since the first episode, I just appreciate you so much. You bring so much joy into my life, even though it's been a crazy couple of weeks. I know that I can come home, I have someone to interact with online about something that I'm really passionate about, and that is crochet and yarn. So thank you is not good enough. <laughs> it doesn't encompass everything I want to say, but it's the only words I have. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching, for subscribing, for sharing your thoughts and your projects with me. I just love, I just love it. <laughs> So with all of that, I hope you guys have a wonderful two weeks of crochet and yarn that you get lots of things accomplished. Wish me luck on that blanket and I will see you guys in two weeks. Bye!